Hi, and welcome to another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Moog Show at 91X. As always, I have Paul Segura. Aloha. Research, uh, oh, that's right. Welcome back from vacation. Thanks. I Good hope you back. enjoyed it. I did. Do you have some tasty beers in Hawaii? I had lots of them, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We'll have to talk it's about that It's a cool beer later. scene in Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, today, we have Mikhail and we have Daniel from McKellar Brewing. How's it going, guys? Great. It's going good. So, uh, welcome. Daniel, you've been with McKellar since day one here in San Diego, right? Yep. So, can you kind of give me just the rundown on the McKellar story? Because it's not an American brewery from the get-go, right? No, it's actually um, a beer brand that originated in Denmark uh, about 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Nickel. Still independent though, right? Still independent. Okay, that's important yeah. to a lot of our viewers. <laughs> yeah, it's an independently owned and operated uh, craft beer brand that started in Copenhagen. And it originated out of the desire to fight big beer. And so yes. a lot of the original recipes were really unorthodox, kind of avant-garde stuff. And, you know, it just kept growing and, and, and blossoming into this like mega powerhouse thing that exists and out of nowhere um, they decided that it was time to start a brewery so put down some roots in San Diego and hired a bunch of crazy people like hey. you guys <laughs> <laughs> that's cool and you know I have to say that I've had the most interesting beers from McKellar and you guys just you know do your own thing and I heard you and Paul talking about it earlier on paper it doesn't seem to make sense but when you guys do it it's perfect so what's the first beer that we're having Cheers, today? by the way. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Skull. Skull. So we're drinking uh, The Breakfast Club. It was uh, a riff on our Beer Geek Breakfast uh, Oatmeal Stout. Uh, it's a heavy uh, dose of lactose sugar, and it uses a single varietal coffee from Moster Coffee um, from region just west of, um, was it Tanzania, Tanzania, I believe? Tanzania, Rwanda. Rwanda. DRC, um, it's uh, Burundi, and it's known for high acidity, berry notes, um, and some nice cool cacao chocolate underneath. So we wanted to play around a little bit with some single varietal stuff, and Breakfast Club made a ton of sense. Yeah. So those, that coffee varietal sounds really intriguing and interesting and really cool and everything, but really it's just lactose and coffee. like. It's pretty tame per like by McKellar standards to only go with. It's a good amount of lactose. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Yeah, the 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 quantity of lactose didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I really want to put a scoop of ice cream in this. Perfect. Like I, like I, what do you think? It's got a really nice, pleasant roastiness. I can't tell how much of that's coming from the coffee and how much from the roasted malts. I think a little bit comes from the, the roasted malts, but the, the coffee, is, we use about two, two pounds of coffee per barrel. Wow, that's so a lot. It, <clears throat> that's like really twice as much of a lot as a lot of other people <laughs> are using. Um, but it's got a really nice, pleasant earthiness and nutty, toasty flavor, not an astringent, like coffee can often have an astringent flavor in the finish, but this is really smooth. Mm -hmm. Maybe yep. the lactose kind of helps smooth it out a little bit yeah we're we're, we're a big fan of um whole bean uh, in cold beer yeah and a lot of the things that we like off of the the coffee are kind of those those roasty high notes and you know blend that with the base beer um we've played around a little bit with cold brews and espresso style brewing uh, we've just fell in love with with the beans I think so it brings some adding nice, beans like, on character. the cold side instead yeah. of making a cold press and adding all of that to the, like thinning out the beer basically. Yeah, I feel like it gives us a little bit more control. Um, you know, we're we're tasting, we're tasting. That's the spot, and with a beer like this, we wanted to hit a nice, a nice balance between the beer and the coffee, and kind of set a stage for future varietals that we might use. Red. Is this a one-off or is it going to stick around a little bit? Um, we're hoping that we can kind of rotate it in and out, um, cool. you know, going into summertime. It's the, mm -hmm. it's well, a, a little warm, <laughs> it's a little yeah. warm for beer festival. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this would be really, really tasty on a rainy day. Yeah. Sitting at home with a book. 8%. It's a, it's a drinker. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> so going back to all the lactose you guys are saying is in it. Um, 
What characteristic does lactose give a beer? Like, what is it doing gives to it? Gives it mouthfeel, gives it some sweetness, like a sweet finish. I'm sorry, I don't want to steal your thunder, you guys. Are... <laughs> no, all the way around. <laughs> no, but he is right about the sweetness. It does, it gives a different type of sweetness than just like if you have a, a high finishing gravity beer, mm -hmm. the lactose really kind of almost creamy creaminess to it. Is that what kind of leaves like the like coating in the mouth a little mm. bit? Because I feel bit. like I have that afterwards. Yeah. Mm. So lactose is present in a lot of milk stouts, hence the name, because lactose is milk sugar. Um, so when you see like milk stouts out on the market, it's because there's lactose. But this is actually an oatmeal stout with lactose. So it's kind of an oatmeal milk stout. Yeah. The, with coffee. The beer was inspired by uh, flat white, you know, milk and coffee. So. Yeah. Had to had to bring that that tweet around. So, so what kind of influence does um, I mean the basically your parent company the the brand of McKellar? What kind of influence do they have on the beers that you're making here? It's it's pretty cool actually. Um, we get a lot of creative freedom in in some ways, and it opens up a lot of doors for us to you know reach out and see has this been done yet um you know and the the, the boundarylessness of mickler historically is inspiring it pushes us to to really think outside of the box and being in san diego and you know i'm born and raised and i've been around san diego beer most of my time and so you know kind of pulling some of those roots and just thinking what's next mm -hmm. you know and all, all of our recipes get run through Mikkel, the boss man. Okay. So have, have, them, have you met him before? Yes. Yeah, is he nice? He's a great guy. Yeah? Is yeah. It, are, you, are you saying that because <laughs> No, not we're at all. <laughs> <laughs> My boss is really awesome, too. He seems to really <laughs> want to push the envelope and just, like, throw flavors together that, you know, when you think about it, might clash, but then you taste the beer and it comes together in a really awesome way. What's... Like his background, is he a chef or something? Like how does he know what all these crazy ingredients are going to taste like when thrown together? Or does he just pull stuff out of a hat? And I think it's a, a little bit of both. Um, you know, he's definitely a foodie and appreciates quality. But, you know, he comes from uh, teaching and was a home brewer that just decided, you know, there's enough is enough let's start putting licorice and IPAs. <laughs> and That's what I'm talking about. Care. He's like, yeah. yeah. So. He's like a crazy savant, man. He's like. A... That's awesome. <laughs> well, so our next beer, Mr. Manager Double IPA. So this is, this is a nice, juicy, hazy looking beer. I smell grapefruit and like stone fruit, like peaches or apricots or something. So we use, um, Cashmere, Mosaic, and uh, Brew One. A uh, really heavy dry hop, uh, modest kettle Whirlpool additions, and ton of oats, ton of wheat. Really push that, that fruit, really push that tropical. Super tropical, mm -hmm. but I also get a lot of stone. Don't you taste like peaches and, I don't know, is it me? It's just <laughs> a great, it's a great I'm mix. Getting, oh, just <laughs> orangey, peachy. I get the orangey, I get the orangey. I'll get, I get, I like, get a little bit of that. It's super good. You'll probably get a different fruit every sip you take. It just kind of keeps evolving yeah. as you keep going with it. Well, some brewers don't like the word juicy, so I kind of refrain from using that all the time, but it is sort of juicy. It's, you know. <laughs> well, I would assume that as it warms up, you're going to pick up more of those fruit notes yeah. also. Yeah. Hmm. What's the ABV on this? So it's about 8%. Doesn't drink it, man. This is super gillable. Ah, uh, We haven't used that word in a I long know. time. We used to say Jillian. crushable a lot. And, <laughs> I don't know. So hop series, explain to me. Is this a, what is your hop series? So within our uh, specialty release program, we wanted to kind of bundle some ideas into a singular train of thought and um, hops being one, fruit being another, coffee being another, and kind of use that as a, a framework for how we want to put together recipes. So uh, we crank out IPAs, double IPAs, pale ales, hoppy blonde beers, triple IPAs, all within this 
general notion that it's going to be hoppy as fuck. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like the labels. Yeah. So what's the story behind the artwork? Who does all the artwork for the labels? And is Mr. Manager sort of the name of the series? Or is does each beer in the series have a different name? Sorry, I threw a lot of questions out. All the questions. <laughs> yeah. I hope you remember all of them along the way. We might need a recap. <laughs> um, well, uh, the artwork is uh, mostly pretty much all at this point. Um, uh, ownership of an artist, Keith Shore. He's uh, based out of Philadelphia. And he's been with Mickler for a long time and really just had an opportunity with our beers to just let loose and kind of explore different inspirations beyond the general Mickler, you know, uh, characters or branding. So um, Mr. Manager was actually um, an Arrested Development reference. And there's a quick little scene with Michael Sarah. you know, I think he's like 14 at the time, but they promote him to manager. And it's a stupid, silly little clip. And we were all cracking up about it one day. So this beer needed a name. So we just called it Mr. Manager. And I like it. he ran with it and gave us a banana with an apron on it. So for some reason, I have like this like notion in my mind, how you were saying he like, you know, tries a product and gets like, I just, I assume like, you know, like, all right, we're going to like drop some acid and then we're going to drink the spear and what comes, like whatever comes <laughs> out of my fingers, this is what the new label will be because it's, it's so something just like out of another world, another di dimension, but I'll sit there and I'll look at the artwork and just like, my mind just goes wild on what the story could be behind each of these. So it's really, really neat. Yeah, that's it's how like, we make beers, too. <coughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Beer ideas that. always come from acid. <laughs> so like to some degree, uh, the, the Mickler brand is a little bit nebulous. Like, people don't know who's, like, making the beer or naming the beer and, you know, all of that stuff. I think it's going to, it's cool for people to see that, like, you guys came up with the name for it, Spont spontaneously and slapped it on there and you know made the beer and it didn't come from some focus group and a bunch of right. you know high paid marketing people yeah. um, it came from you guys which is rad yeah nobody <laughs> nobody wears suits at our company so that's pretty fun <laughs> most people wear shirts and t-shirts and you know jog 13 casual miles during lunch so. yeah <laughs> so aloha fridays it's a big, that's very awesome. nice <laughs> Uh, where is the tasting room located? Uh, we're at 9368 Cabot Drive. So uh, that's the original Alesmith location, right? Correct. Okay, so you've got a little bit of history there. Um, was, was there a relationship there before with Alesmith and Peter Zein and, and Mickler, or how did that come about, or did it just happy accident? If we go all the way back, um, you know, Mickle was really inspired by Speedway Stout to finally start getting into uh, craft brewing. Ah. And actually reached out to Peter and asked him, how do you make this beer? Because I love it so much, it's the perfect beer, it's amazing. And so they formed a relationship a long time ago. And as Alesmith started to look at other options for their production space, they needed to move out. They wanted to find somebody to move in that they really had a you know good relationship with and they trusted so it kind of turned into a little bit of a, a partnership opportunity where we moved in and you know we got to brew with some of their old brewers and hang out with those guys and really learn That's the system awesome ah oh, peter zine such a great guy that whole family the whole alesmith operation and i think that that's one of those really um special things about the beer community here in San Diego is how much everybody helps each other out. And granted, I mean, you all are in competition with one, one another, but that doesn't get in the way with relationships and helping each other out. And I think that's really unique. Yeah. So finishing it off, the color on this, can we talk about this I can for see a why we saved this for last. Oh my this gosh. smells amazing. And it looks, yeah, it looks like wine, doesn't it? Mmm. Purple. What fruits are used? So this is um, oh. uh, red wine, grapes, a uh, hole on the skin, um, about three months of maceration with the beer, 
and it was a fun project. Uh, last year, we had the opportunity to meet and hang out with the uh, guys from Upland Brewing out of Indianapolis and Bloomington area in Indiana, and started talking about you know how we could do a collaboration beer, and we were just in the middle of processing a grape saison from Temecula harvested grapes. They have a big wine growing region, wine grape growing region out there as well. So we thought, you know, what a silly idea, but what if we just traded grapes and blended and made our own beers? And so they mailed us uh, just uh, about a thousand pounds of uh, Chamberson, it's a French varietal. And we blended some dark sour barrels and sat just about three months. In Sent wine them. barrels? Um, it was blended into a, into a, a tank. Okay. The fruit went into the tank okay. and then punched it down a few times as the, yeah. the cap started and separated, let it settle. And it's been in the bottle just about two and a half, three months now. Um, really driving for lower carbonation. Really wanted to push the, the fruit forward on this. Snuggle bus. I love the name too. <laughs> just snuggle right up. In yeah, I want to snuggle, snuggle with this beer. <laughs> It's it's not super like face puckeringly tart. It's got a really pleasant tartness, um, and it's got the right amount of like wine flavor. Mm -hmm. It's grapey and fruity, um, not overly wine like. It almost tasted like it had some boysenberries or something in there. Yeah, a bit of that you know, earthy. dark raspberries or something. Really nice beer, man. Well done. Mm -hmm. Would you say Chamberson was the varietal? Correct. Wow, interesting. Yeah, and we sent them um, Malbec. Okay. We got up in Temecula. Yeah. Uh, we made a, a beer, a blonde sour with Malbec, sent them the rest. And so uh, their version will be the Cuddle Bus, and it'll be similar, similar labeling, but um, dark sour base maybe some Flanders style beer in there as well to, to keep the, the thread alive and it'd be uh, cool to kind of see how both uh, the house projects come together. That's awesome. Do you mind us asking which um, lacto strain it was? Uh, it's a ton. We have a, a few house cultures that we work with, um, a lot of lacto brevis, a lot of pediococcus, um, some classic Britannomyces, okay. um, just been working on it over the last few years. Um, it started as um, a blend that I've had for five or six or seven years now, and we still slowly started to dial it in as we started to put beer in barrels. You know, we wanted a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this, and so over time, it's it's kind of fallen into its nice little rhythm. Beautiful blend, man. Um, I like the Brevis personally because it has that tart cherry, like you know. I was gonna say, this even has a little dark cherry-like flavor in there as well. Yeah, we wanted to push a little bit of that Britannomyces lambicus, get that pity, leathery thing mm -hmm. to come out over time. And built the, built the base beer on some roasted malts, a little bit of caramel, some Munich, and kept it pretty simple, but mm -hmm. you know, it's all about the fermentation. Great mm -hmm. job. You yeah. Guys are true artists. And a, a great variety today, you know, from a Oatmeal stout, you know, hazy double IPA, just barrel aged sour. These are all fantastic. So if you could tell someone who has never been to your brewery before, what would you tell them? Why should they come and check you guys out? I think just the the wide, you know, array of styles that we have on up on the board mm -hmm. every single day. There's something for every beer drinker. Yep. They can come in, have something light, you know, an easy drinking lager. They can go for something barrel aged, whiskey barrel aged, just, Ooh. you know, really oh. just the whole spectrum. Um, and we also have beers to go. So some beers that we have in our cooler aren't on tap. So then they can also buy those and check those out. Very cool. Awesome. Well, uh, is there anything big coming up in the coming weeks that's going on and any releases, anything like that? Um, Check us out every week. We usually have a new can coming out on Saturdays. Oh, weekly. Weekly. Nice. Um, sometimes two, sometimes four. Wow. Uh, we'll start rolling out some more bottles and 
come July, we'll be opening the doors to our tasting room in Little Italy, which will be a <gasps> small That's little exciting. outpost. That's super exciting. Congratulations. Huge. Yeah, that'll be draft beer, beer to go, you know, a little standing room. Very cool. Well, Mikhail Daniel, thank you so much for making time to come on Beer for Breakfast. We really appreciate it and try bring these awesome beers. Uh, Paul, it's Thanks nice for to letting have me crash. Back. Always, you know, <laughs> want you to get next Cheers, man. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Good yeah. job on the beers. They're excellent. And uh, thank you for watching. You can check out previous editions of Beer for Breakfast ABB on 91X.com. And don't forget, tune in every Friday morning at 845. Paul battles traffic up the 805 to come hang out with us and tell you what you should be drinking this weekend. So thanks, and we will see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.